Hello and welcome to Star Trek is Life. In this video, we'll take a look at the Borg physiology. This will be part two of a two-part series. If you haven't watched part one yet, please do that now. So in part one, we discuss the Borg goals, where they came from, and their physical appearance and technologies. In this part two, we will cover Borg babies, the hive mind, and neurotransceivers. No, not Elon Musk's neural link, neurotransceivers. Okay, so let's go ahead and get started. A drone's only requirement was a supply of energy to maintain the implants that in turn maintain its biological functions. This energy was supplied during regeneration cycles within the Borg alcove. Upon receiving damage, a drone would return to the alcove for assessment of the damage. Severely damaged drones were disassembled and scavenged for reusable parts. Borg infants were not accepted into the collective until they had matured to a certain age. Until reaching this age, assimilated infants and newts were placed inside maturation chambers. Borg drones were equipped with a myriad of technologies integrated into their bodies, which enabled them to perform their duties within the collective, several of which were universal to all drones. A neural transceiver kept them connected to the hive mind. A personal force field protected each drone from most energy-based attacks. A drone was able to communicate with their ship with signals across a subspace domain, the basis of their hive mind, which data likened to a transporter beam. Each drone possessed a pair of assimilation tubules embedded in one hand for the purpose of instantly injecting individuals with Borg nanoprobes. A cortical processor allowed a drone to rapidly assimilate visual information. Borg drones were also equipped with a neural processor, which kept a record of every instruction that particular Borg receives from the collective hive mind. Captain Picard used one such processor to discover that the Borg were attempting to use the deflector dish of the USS Enterprise as an interplexing beacon to contact the Borg in 2063. Drones also contained fail-safes designed to deactivate and even vaporize their own bodies, thereby allowing the collective to eliminate damaged or dead drones without leaving remains to be exploited by outsiders. The captured drone 3 of 5 also made comments indicating that this vaporization may have been a form of resource reabsorption. One of these fail-safes was intended to automatically deactivate drones experiencing strong emotional states, which the Borg interpreted as a sign of disconnection from the hive mind. And that, my Star Trek of friends, is part two of our two-part series discussing the Borg physiology. If you appreciate the information presented in this video, please consider subscribing to this channel. And remember, Star Trek is life.